St. Augustine called it the passing over mystery, or the paschal mystery, from the Hebrew word for Passover, Pesach. Today we might use a variety of metaphors, reversing engines, a change in game plan, a falling off of the very wagon that we constructed. No one would choose such upheaval consciously. We must somehow fall into it. Those who are too carefully engineering their own superiority systems will usually not allow it at all. It is much more done to you than anything you do yourself. And sometimes non-religious people are more open to this change in strategy than our religious folks who have their private salvation project all worked out. This is how I would interpret Jesus' enigmatic words, the children of this world are wiser in their ways than are the children of light. Luke 16, 8. I have met too many rigid and angry old Christians and clergy to deny this sad truth. But it seems to be true in all religions, until and unless they lead to the actual transformation of persons. In this book, I would like to describe how this message of falling down and moving up is, in fact, the most counterintuitive message in most of the world's religions, including, and most especially, Christianity. We grow spiritually much more by doing it wrong than by doing it right. That might just be the central message of how spiritual growth happens, yet nothing in us wants to believe it. I actually think it is the only workable meaning of any remaining notion of original sin. There seems to have been a fly in the ointment from the beginning. But the key is recognizing and dealing with the fly, rather than needing to throw out the whole ointment. If there is such a thing as human perfection, it seems to emerge precisely from how we handle the imperfection that is everywhere, especially our own. What a clever place for God to hide holiness so that only the humble and the earnest will find it. A perfect person ends up being one who can consciously forgive and include imperfection, rather than one who thinks he or she is totally above and beyond imperfection. It becomes sort of obvious once you say it out loud. In fact, I would say that the demand for the perfect is the greatest enemy of the good. Perfection is a mathematical or divine concept. Goodness is a beautiful human concept that includes us all. By denying their pain, avoiding the necessary falling, many have kept themselves from their own spiritual depths and therefore have been kept from their own spiritual heights. First half of life religion is almost always about various types of purity codes, or thou shalt nots, to keep us up, clear, clean, and together, like good Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. A certain kind of purity and self-discipline is also behoovely, at least for a while, in the first half of life, as the Jewish Torah brilliantly presents. I was a good Star Scout myself and a Catholic altar boy besides, who rode my bike to serve the 6 a.m. Mass when I was merely ten years old. I hope you're impressed as I was with myself. Because none of us desire a downward path to growth through imperfection, seek it or even suspect it, we have to get the message with the authority of a divine revelation. So Jesus makes it into a central axiom. The last really do have a head start in moving toward first. And those who spend too much time trying to be first will never get there. Jesus says this clearly in several places and in numerous parables, although those of us still on the first journey just cannot hear this. It has been considered 
mere religious fluff, as most of Western history has made rather clear. Our resistance to the message is so great that it could be called outright denial, even among sincere Christians. The human ego prefers anything, just about anything, to falling or changing or dying. 